And I mean, this one here actually is, there's an awful lot more focus has come on workplace wellness in the last number of years. Now, I work for General Electric, and I mean, they would have been one of the more proactive companies in this area. And I mean, they were doing programs like, you know, back in the early 2000s, um, I was trying to go along and actually get, get the most out of our people. And I, it, <laughs> that sounds very much company focused, but the thing is they know if we're doing stuff that we enjoy doing, well then they're gonna get more out of us as part of that. But there has been a surge in positive attitudes around uh, work well-being and workplace initiatives. However, there are still some companies that are very slow to implement it. Um, understanding their benefits and using them could be the edge that your organization needs. And in, in a lot of cases here, actually, this is kind of driven towards one of the big problems that companies have these days is trying to find the right talent or retain existing talent. And this is one of the things where a differentiator can come into play. I'm sure some of the companies you visited, oh, they're actually placing this high on their... Retention is the, is the word now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you get that traction? Yeah, yeah. Is the retaining the people? Well, like, uh, the, the promotion for, for like, when you're looking at, at workplace wellness, you're looking at things like productivity, you're looking at things like morale, and that, that's a huge one. Um, you know, getting teams to actually work more effectively together. And also, actually, this the idea of stress and strain, of reducing that. So on the productivity side, healthy employees can physically perform better because they have more energy and they're also more efficient and more focused. Simple, but I mean, that's, that's what you can actually benefit from it. When it comes to the teams and morale, uh, when teams engage in wellness initi initiatives together, outside and inside work, they have a shared purpose which builds camaraderie. There's a t an opportunity there as well actually to bring in that kind of competitive edge, you know, where if you're going along and actually doing some sort of a wellness program and you have team A against team B, that kind of have, well, it can have negative and kind of positive connotations, but in a lot of cases, like it just adds that little bit of extra edge to it. So it's actually worth going along and, and looking at something like that. And then when it comes to stress, fitness and healthy eating can reduce stress. And if a company can implement mindfulness and meditation, this will also help people reduce stress. I mean, meditation, is this something that and many of you have tried or? Yeah, well, I, 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 I don't know what it is about me, actually. I mean, maybe it's that left brain logical part, actually, that I, don't, I can't come along, actually, and stop thinking. And, and I know you need to go into kind of but one of the things that I've actually found works for me is I enjoy playing golf. And the, the, I suppose the importance, actually, of stopping and start focusing this way about what I want to do, breathing, which is... You know, it's one of those ones which is fairly critical to do. And sometimes people actually forget to go along and actually and, and, and you know use their breathing to, to help them through those different areas. But by doing the golf, actually, I, I've yet to hit a bad shot in my head. Now, I can't do it on the golf course, but I mean, I've hit some absolutely fabulous goals when, when I'm in that space about thinking about what I can do. But it is, um, it is an important one where, where you can do a lot with it. And I mean, I mentioned like the, you know, with wellness programs, you have to have a game plan um, because well -being, it doesn't need to be costly and minimal investment can introduce effective results and you can actually create a productive environment where people will work better in a space designed to promote productivity and minimise distractions. And the distractions is a big one because, you know, if, if you're coming along and actually don't have the privacy to do something where you need to be able to concentrate, that can be a, a, a big negative for a lot of people. Um, something as actually ha simple as having good lighting will help prevent fatigue and headaches. Um, stimulate brain function with inspiring colours and having pictures of nature can sometimes in incentivize people to go for a walk. You know, it's, it's one of these kind of, you know, um, well, I'm trying to get the name of it now actually, where you're, you're putting something on a wall actually and I mean if you walk past it often enough, it's your subconscious is actually picking up on these things and can do something about it. Um, encourage balance, and this is the idea of uh, as much as men would like to do, we probably are, we work more effectively if we do a single task. We start, do it and finish it off. Women are meant to have the ability to multitask, but I think the part of it that what I understand is that you can actually move from task to task faster than men do. But the, the other side of it is that if you can start something and actually complete it, there's a lot more satisfaction out of that than actually trying to do five things and you're tipping away at a time. So getting that balance right actually is very important. 
encourage people to step away from their desk because that one actually is where again you're doing something by getting up walking away getting the cup of coffee or water water is good too uh, you know it comes along actually and gets your body back into movement again and hopefully when you go back to your desk you're back okay i now want to go back and do what i'm doing again but you know it's that movement like even getting up and walking around the chair seriously i mean it does make a difference when you've been sitting down for a long time and it does help you to maybe get back, get back into the groove because sometimes you drill down too far and you kind of keep going down into the weeds and it helps to kind of stop yeah i know where i need to be and, and refocus again on that one there and some of the idea like this, this, it's very easy like with things like email these days it's very very easy to go along actually and send out little daily reminders actually of what wellness or well-being actually can be about so utilize those as, as much as possible and I, I came across this research actually around 10 programs or 10 things you need to be doing actually to go along and make sure that things are moving in, in your company when it comes to wellness with all of these things you have to measure things right you, you have to use metrics to measure program performance with the most common being changes in health risk, financial impact, and positive clinical outcomes. The second thing is focus on common health conditions. And this is the one like, you know, diabetes, obesity, asthma, heart disease, and depression. These are things that are becoming more, more commonplace out there. So like having, you know, workshops or having someone to come in about talking, to, uh, talking about these things is again, something that employees can relate to they either are going through it themselves or they may know someone that's going through it. So it actually helps. Um, physical activity, you can't beat it. I mean, if you can go along actually and allow people to do maybe 10, 15 minutes of a break to do an exercise every day, that goes a long way towards your you know, cardiac um, rehab, which suggests you need to be doing about 150 minutes a week doing some sort of a, an exercise. And the exercise has to be a minimum of 10 minutes. So you can do, you know, 15 10 minute sessions or you can do five 30 minute sessions but as long as you build up to the 150 you're heading in the right direction um, example is a huge one so i mean making sure that you have managers that are going along and promoting um, participation is a key one and it will go along and actually get people on board uh, you got to go along and actually make sure that you personalize the programs because not everyone it's not it's a, the same thing is not going to work for everyone you need to go along and be able to make sure that people will engage with what suits them best not you trying to force it upon them um, strategic consistent communication and i mean this is the part communicate 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 you know because in a lot of cases people will go along and say oh i didn't know that was happening or no one told me about it until afterwards and there's no excuse for that with the technology that's there um, encouraging teamwork through sports activity clubs, interdepartmental challenges, and other programs to leverage social support. This is the one actually that, rather than you being the only person doing it, knowing that other people around you are involved in something similar, comes along and actually helps motivate you. It also is that kind of, you know, I'm sure I won't bother going today as she's raining. If the others are going out, it's harder for you to say, come up with the excuse of actually not doing it. Um, there's an opportunity to use financial incentives, such as, you know, the in, you can actually get reduced uh, insurance premiums actually for health if you're involved in some sort of some of those activities so it's important to go along and, and make those aware wherever possible and um, the new technology i mean the, the smart watches uh, or the fitbits the, the pedometers i mean having those types of things actually are useful some people hate them i mean you know someone actually is tracking me and they know where i've been and know what i'm doing and you know, okay if that's the mentality you have it's probably better off you don't do it but I mean, there is a, a lot to be said for, it, it kind of rewards you by telling you what you've actually managed to achieve, but it also holds you accountable to make sure that you continue doing it. So, uh, the, the, what they call the gamification that they bring in those things. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, the other part I would say to actually that one of the ulterior motives actually from a company's perspective is if you're willing to go along and actually share your data, not to have it identifiable against you, but they can actually use that to go along actually and show what their company is actually doing, but also to show the effect of it from you know department to department, the ones that are doing it versus the ones that are not. I guarantee you, you'll see a difference, you know. And some of it actually will be an engagement, some of it actually will be on absenteeism. Um, so I mean, these these things actually are they're promoting it for a reason. It is to health 
or to benefit the employees. But there's a, a back end benefit for the company as well, right? But you know, that they're they are focused on you in most cases. <laughs> okay. Um, aim for small measurable improvements that can be incorporated into an employee's day and eventually becomes a habit. And that's the one actually where they say if you do something, was it 21 times or something like that? Uh, or 21 days in a row, that it can become a habit at that point? Um, now, it doesn't always work for diets, but that's a different story. Um, 